good day. Today we're going to be focusing on Fusion 360 and the ability to create a body shape uh, from our standard blank design. And again, this is going to be more of the CAD side. We'll be creating some additional videos on the CAM side coming up. But for the CAD side, uh, we're providing the new 2019 uh, CNC Institute uh, blank, model blank, so we have all a consistent data set to work with. So you'll find that download um, both on the website and I'm sure that your instructor will share this with you. So one of the things with this particular model is it's, it is a uh, fusion design uh, body blank. I have to give credit to Ethan Kern as the uh, initial uh, designer for this. And so the, the idea is that this is now set up with layers and details to help make this process easier, both in the training institute and in your classroom. So in essence, all I did was click on the version one, see what the details um, look like. You, if you click on view details on the web, it'll open up a, a web viewer. Uh, and you're able then to download it actually uh, as uh, different model files going forward. So I'm going to actually go ahead and insert it into my current design file here into Fusion. Um, need to save the design before inserting components. So let me hit save. And this one will be uh, sample test. of new model body spread and it'll save it in our first environment. So I actually want to bring this model in and here it is and right now it does have a, a quite a few objects associated with it but before we do anything uh, let me go ahead and choose OK and I'm not going to move or modify it. Uh, I need to go through and explain the different components associated with this. So we've got some no-fly zones, we have some mounting uh, and uh, location uh, holes set for the blank itself or for the body spread itself. And so first things. And so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about from the top to the bottom. The top no-fly zone uh, will keep your cutting uh, tool away from your bolt area or if you're not using bolts but using vacuums and you can use those locations as a pin location so you can flip the body blank um, if you need to for custom design for the back uh, but the idea is to have specific no-fly zones on the top and the bottom so that way if you do put a bolt through to hold it down um, into either MDF with a helicoil or other components, you can do that. The profile necklines, you notice that there's four large dots uh, and there's some profile of that neck pocket. Well, that neck pocket actually extends out a little bit farther than what we currently utilize and that is to make sure that it clears the whole surface. So that horizontal line coming across is the end of the guitar body and then it will clear the rest of that pocket off that uh, surface. We will, when we get into the cam, we do actually have to make relief cuts uh, so we don't have chip out when we uh, work around that edge of the neck pocket because it's typically a thin piece of material. The pickup pockets are set, the string holes and the mounting for our standard bridge is provided. Uh, there is a uh, point uh, also located uh, that could be a bridge ground location in the center of that, but that's basically a center line location to keep us aligned with our design, so that way we don't run into a problem. You'll notice that in the lower right hand side we've got the uh, pickup, or excuse me, the electronics pocket, and so that is already pre-created on the back of the blank. And so this will be a purchasable design as we go forward now. And so the back will have that 
um, milled out along with the ferrule holes for our kit. And that will make it a little bit easier for faculty to utilize their CNC initially until they feel comfortable with actually creating custom uh, pockets associated with uh, their uh, students' guitar bodies. Electronics pocket, and you've got the bean plate easement or the surface for the bean plate. Uh, so that way there is a uh, recessed surface that's an eighth of an inch uh, that the bean plate sits into and enough room for uh, screws associated with that. If you want to dive down into the actual model itself, um, there are a variety of different sketches that you can use if you were creating custom designs also. Um, so there is the center tree which lays out the pickup pocket and the neck pocket locations, uh, the electronics pocket, uh, the uh, back drill locations and the body profile, which is our uh, larger uh, block of uh, material. And so in that aspect, we could go and edit those, but there's really no need to because what we're going to be doing is creating a new sketch for the front of the guitar body itself, or actually for the whole guitar body. And so what we'll do is we'll apply a new sketch to the top surface. So as you're uh, going ahead and instructing this, um, go ahead and, and select uh, the top surface of the guitar body itself. We'll apply a new sketch. And so now that we have our sketching tools and our tools available over here on the right hand side for uh, geometric constraints, uh, we have the ability to create our guitar design. And so each guitar design is unique and different. There's no right or wrong environment for that to work. Just, re just remind the students that the tighter the shape that they make, the harder it will be to sand. And so really sharp corners are extremely difficult to sand well, plus the cutter will not make an extremely sharp cut, uh, corner on the interior uh, design. So with under the sketch area, and so we're under the model, um, model tools, under the sketch area, we've got things such as lines, and then we have also splines. So the line will give you a straight line. Uh, the arc will give you an arc between two points that you select. And the spline will create what is known as a fit curve around a, ver a series of points that you project or select. And so we'll start off by using the spline tool, and then we're going to shift to the line tool and then ultimately we'll also test the arc tool. So you can see all three tools on this particular design. So we're going to go to a fit point spline. I'm going to zoom up and I'm going to pick this top dot as our starting point for the uh, body. Now that starting point can fall anywhere along this line. However, from the midpoint and beyond is a beneficial location because that neck when it sits in that pocket, will have less room for movement. The larger the the uh, edge wall here is on this t on the side. However, you also have to relieve the area for hand, so that way you can fret the strings. And so there's a catch-22 with that um, component because you want it close, but you also want the shape to provide some stability and support for the neck location. So I'm going to start this point slightly below, about even with the uh, mounting hole. And so I pick a point. I'm going to actually make it a point forward first, and then I'm going to come back around so it curves around. Um, and then this is going to be part of my neck relief. And the more points I put in, the more control I have. What happens if I don't have enough control? I can add points later. So there's nothing that says that what we're creating uh, is in its final form just on this run, this point. And so I can go in and edit these data points, grab them, move them, adjust them. And what, 
and what that will allow me to do is, is create a very controllable surface. And don't forget, you're also going to be sanding this partic particular object. So this is for the rough CNC cutting. The final shape will actually be created once it's sanded. So from here, I'm going to actually use the regular line command. So I'll attach the line to the endpoint of that spline. And we'll make some interesting jogs around the electronics pocket. So the dash line, the outer dash line, is the no-fly zone. Uh, you can't, I wouldn't get uh, closer than about a quarter inch from that uh, no-fly zone, so that way you can ensure that you have enough space with your design. So you saw I highlighted the other data point that I selected and so I can use that as a projection tool um, associated with that. So there we have the linear component or a linear design aspect. Um, again I right mouse click I can choose OK. I can come back and use the arc command now and the arc command using three point arc, start the endpoint, pick a location, and I can either drag the arc in, which is my goal here, is to drag the arc in. But if I don't like that data point, I can choose OK. And now I can grab this data point and change that position. I can also grab the center point, which will then control uh, that, but I can't. I can grab the arc radius and change the radius too. However, the, the uh, actual arc itself is not like a spline. So you may end up having to make shorter arc segments to get the design that you're looking for. So again, use the three point arc, data point, data point, there and then we'll create a line we'll create an upper bout and here we actually want to attach to this top dot it's really important to attach to that top dot location because that side of the neck pocket is our alignment side so do not eliminate um, anything on that side or if you do make sure that there's a substantial component so there is alignment available that makes the easiest for when you attach your and if I don't like anything I can go ahead and use the modification tools within the sketch environment also um, you know this includes the ability to fill it so I can actually apply a fillet here so I can apply a fillet radius or fillet this um, and then specify the radius. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it these two lines and then I can put in a, a two inch diameter radius and you can see how much smoothing it's applied to that. And I can do the same thing here or I can apply a fillet to that surface also. And again that's another way instead of using the three point arc to get um, so if you want this to be repeatable, you'd want to go ahead and add the dimensions and data points and you can make that a repeatable shape. Uh, at this point, this model is now complete. So once you have this completed, uh, as uh, our training will begin with this type of a model shape and start in on the CAM training uh, next. So have a great day and we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Bye now.